Hello and welcome to another tutorial from 3 Skill. I'm Jim Farrell or Thomas if you prefer and today I'm going to show you how to use the new plugin for Cinema 4D called LipTalk. So LipTalk is a plugin that allows you to create lip sync animations for your characters. But how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. The first thing we need if we want to work with audio files is of course an audio recording. You can do this easily with Audacity for example, or we can create some with for example Clipjam, which makes IA generated voices available for free, or we get some from other services on the internet. The first thing we do is convert an audio file into a transcript. This takes just a few seconds. Then we take for example a character from Death Studio, or simply our own character that we have prepared for LipTalk, and load the transcript into the plugin. And press load. Now we load our audio file to listen to it and press play and our character starts to move his lips. Of course we can also animate manually with the manual recorder and interrupt the automatic process. But we can also do it differently and simply switch the plugin to text mode and convert the text to phonemes and let our character move his lips to the text we have entered. We can bake the whole thing later with LipTalk's built-in baking function into keyframes and create motions from them, which we can then of course save in the asset browser or on our hard drive to build a library, in order to later reuse it non-linearly on our characters that are prepared for LipTalk. Okay, let's handle quickly the installation of the audio converter. So therefore you just go to my website 3skill.com slash shop and there you will find later the LipTalk product. Follow along this, this link and you will end up here on the LipTalk product side. And here in the section, if you scroll down, you can find the LipTalk converter. So we, you have three possibilities now. For Windows users, it's pretty simple. Simply download the Windows um, zip file. So don't wonder, it's, uh, it's uh, uploaded to Google Drive. Download it. And he asks you a uh, big file size. Simply choose it, download the file. And then you will end up here with a zip file here, the Windows converter, Windows zip file. And if you open it, you can see here the LipTalk audio converter exe file and a data folder and the license and source code where the license is and the source code as well. Um, this is necessary because it's um, licensed under the uh, Genu Genui General Public License 3.0. Uh, Simply fire it up and test it. Then you test it if it can convert an audio file. This has to be a WAV file, mono stereo. And follow along the tutorial for the LipTalk converter. It comes after this uh, installation tutorial. And try that out first. For Macintosh user, it's pretty similar. You download the Mac OS and unpack it. And then you will end up with the same folder structure, but Instead of an .exe file, you will have an Unix executable file. But um, for some reasons, uh, he compiled it incorrectly because um, it shows like this. It shows the labels wrong. And um, even though I had installed the, the latest uh, Python version 3.11.5, um, but it works, it can compile, simply you have the language menu and the emitter, you have the advanced checkbox, the load audio saver and the convert button. So it works, so we have to do nothing, simply fire it up and if this works for you, if you end up with a um, transcript file, then everything works fine. For Macintosh user, who for this, who if this doesn't work for you, you have another possibility. So you can try the software Wine. Go to Wine.org uh, or WineHQ.org. There you can download, follow along the instructions. The link is also in the description. Um, follow along that. So Wine enables you to run Windows EXE files um, with this Wine software. So you, then you can download also the Windows 
um, zip file and try to run it via Vine. If this is also not working for Mac OS users, then you can download the source code files. These are the original Python files. This also uh, goes for Windows users. So you also can try this method out. So if you have downloaded the original source files, it looks like something like this. You have the resource folder and there is the original Python audio converter. So, but to run audio, uh, Python files on your system, you have to install Python first on your system because Python is an interpreted, interpreted language and to run Python files, you have to download Python. It's similar to Java. As you can see, now we have, <coughs> Um, I have now uninstalled Python quickly and now when you go into your uh, purely Python software you can see the Py file but if you click on that you, you have no ability to execute the software so you need to install Python on your system and I'll show you how this works. This goes for Windows user as also for uh, Macintosh user. So you go to python.org and download uh, the Python version. So you can use the new, the, the, the latest Python version, it should work. But I installed it here with the, um, uh, I installed it here, Python 3.11.5. Simply choose uh, your hot desired Python version. I install here, download here Python installer, a uh, 64 bit installer, download it and then I will add up here in my download folder here with this Python 3.11.5. I simply install this Python. So he says install now. And this is very important. I add now the Python to my path, to my syspath, because now I'm able to reach it here with uh, the commands in the command later in the terminal and so forth. This is very important. And now I say simply um, install now. And this, this everything what we have to do now, simply installing, this takes a few seconds. Okay, he has finished the, the installation and now Python is installed on our system. You can find it here under C um, users um, app data local and programs where is it programs here you can find it here python 3.11 is installed in our system and now when i go back to my python you can see now i can he uh, he recognizes the um the python file now we can run this python file but now I run this Python file and now it runs. So, but you need also additional um, libraries or modules to install because the audio converter needs a, a third party library, which is not shipped with the standard library of Python. So we can try that out. So we go into our load audio file and I convert here um, the Spanish female and try to convert it. And as you can see, he says no module named Allosaurus installed. Module find not found error. So what we have to do first, we have to install the module. Um, and since I assume that you are not a Python developer, I make it very easy. We simply start here um, uh, the command. Simply start the command. What you have to do now is simply type in Python, uh, not Python, simply uh, for Windows user now, simply type in pip install allosaurus. For Macintosh users, it's partly different. They have to open the terminal and instead of typing Python, uh, instead of typing pip install, uh, Allosaurus, they simply type in Python 3 pip install Allosaurus. And if this is not working, then you try P uh, Python 3m 
pip install uh, allosaurus. But I think the first uh, method should work. And now he automatically installs every package which is required to run allosaurus. So here you can see numpy, number, ginger, torch, resampy, allosaurus. These packages will be installed. This takes a while. You have to download it. He installs now, install it now, he installs it now into the global Python path we looked at. The Python, and as you can see here, under lib, and inside packages, we now see the Adosaurus. It's now installed globally. So uh, this is a lot of packages which are installed now, but now we are able to run this Python software globally. So I click here again. So he has finished. So he indicates it with that he has finished. Everything worked fine. We can close that. And now when I run the auto converter now and try to convert now an audio file, my Spanish female here. And now I simply click convert and now no error shows anymore. He needs a little bit time to download the pre-trained uh, model from the internet. Now he has finished. If you convert it again, he, he doesn't have to download again. So everything worked fine. If you are a, if you don't want to install it globally, then I assume that you are, uh, have a bit knowledge about, over, about Python. So then you can <clears throat> make this uh, with an IDE. So I have here the libtalk converter. I, you load simply, you create a new project and uh, paste the libtalk auto converter file into this um, project. And then uh, for this instant, uh, for this example, I have here PyCharm. Then in the importing settings, the import is a little bit down below. So this is a little bit weird because otherwise it starts, uh, uh, the program needs more time to install. And then you have here the Allosaurus and then he underlines it. If I say here Im import Kiwi, as you can see, he underlines it and then he, you hover it with the mouse and say install package Kiwi. Then you click that and then he automatically installs all the required packages for Allosaurus as well. So this is also a possibility to have. Then you can also compile it with PyInstaller if you are familiar with that and you can do it yourself. So this is everything you have to know um, for the Python uh, audio converter to work on your system. And yes, we see us later in the next video. So in the last video, I showed you how to install the audio converter. So this is a little bit different um, for Windows and Mac users. So when we installed it successfully, we simply start the audio converter and it shows up with its bare essentials here. Just a few parameters to set up. On the top, we have a link to the online help, which directly leads you to the online help. I intentionally let this um, left this um, console open to see some errors. So if some errors are happening here. Um, on the bottom, we can see a link to the um, a public, to the license of the auto converter and so forth. Um, here on the top, we can see here the language menu from which you can choose your hot desired language. So international is the default value and enables you to convert up to 2,500 languages. Um, but sometimes um, you will end up with a little bit inac inaccurate uh, results because international has over 160 phonemes to in his uh, selection. So uh, sometimes it detects the wrong phoneme so you can switch here to a specific language. Maybe this works better for you. This is just a matter of try and error. I try to 
update this in future updates of the audio converter. Um, this can, of course, um, yeah, improve the the accuracy of speech intelligibility, so to say. Um, here we have the phoneme emitter, so it it so to say um, um, determines how many phonemes uh, should be recognized, and the higher the values, the more phonemes will be emitted and um, if lower values emit less phonemes. So if you are unsatisfied with the result in the animation, maybe your animation is a little bit restless or unnatural, this is most of the case, this is an indicator for that there are too many phonemes. So you can reduce this value a little bit to, um, yeah, to get the animation a little bit more, uh, uh, yeah, consistent, more consistent. Um, the advanced mode, if you check this button, it writes all the amplitudes into the transcript file. So this will result in much larger file size, of course, but this enables you later in LibTalk to toggle between normal and the advanced mode. So you can use both modes. And if you just uh, convert without the advanced mode, you have just the ability to use the normal mode in LibTalk plugin. Yes, um, okay, these uh, parameter, this uh, amplitude files are, amplitudes are important for LibTalk um, because it's for characters for uh, who um, intend to draw out a little bit, uh, tend to draw out a little bit the, um, the words like, oh my God, like I do at the moment. So with, uh, for long vowels, so to say, so LibTalk needs the amplitudes to detect silences and so forth. The load audio is, of course, you can load an audio file. Simply go here and load an audio file. Maybe here, Spanish female normal. And as you can see, he, app, he automatically um, creates here uh, the location for the transcript and the file name and, and the, ex uh, but with another extension. If you're not satisfied with the location or with the file name, simply go to save script then choose another name. And then simply we press convert and then he, you need to be online for the first time, maybe um, to download the pre-trained model. This can take a few seconds. If you have converted, then uh, it doesn't need to uh, download it again. So it's just for one time. Then we press convert, it shows up a progress bar and if he has finished, he indicates that with a uh, finished word. So this takes just a few seconds if you convert it again, as you can see, it's much faster. And then we end up here with a transcript. So in this case, I what name did I? Here, I have a transcript here. As you can see, some data inside. So this is in the normal mode. If I toggle here the advanced mode and convert it again, when we call it again, as you can see, the same uh, values here, but now with all the amplitudes, and this is much bigger file size. So first it had 80 kilobytes. Now it has five six megabytes or something okay let's let me quickly explain how this works from macintosh users because it's a little bit different so macintosh user when they downloaded um the auto converter so it looks a little bit different so because i uh i'm not a macintosh user it's a for the it's the first time i used mac so i just uh, downloaded the the ide for python and tried to convert it into a app file or in this case a unix uh, executable file which should run on which should uh, which should run on your system and then it looks something like this you have this folder unzip it and you end up here with this libtalk converter here and it looks a little bit different so um, um so when you start it as you can see here he shows a warning that the tk is deprecated I didn't figure out how this, how I can fix that because I had installed 
installed the uh, Python 3.11.5 version. So TK should be um, up to date, but it is not. It, it, it seems that it installed the TK um, 2.7. Um, so, but anyways, the the audio commander works. So you can see the labels and the and the headline, but the headline is still there. You can see it. It loads also the um, the um, the website, the manual. So if you're a little bit searching after that, but it shows here the menu with the languages. It shows the emitter. It shows the advanced checkbox. He showed the load audio, the save audio. Simply just load the audio and save the audio and simply convert it. When you convert it for the first time, it takes maybe five seconds. So we test this now. I switch here to the downloads folder here and open here the lip source resource. And here you can see the Italian mail normal wave. I want to convert now. So I simply left uh, leave the setting as they are and simply load the Italian mail wave file here, open it and automatically he should create here a path. So this works, you can't see it, but he creates automatically the, the, the path with the same name as the audio file, uh, but with another extension. So, and when I click here now convert, as you can see here, it starts converting and it takes a little bit because, no, it doesn't take a little bit. If you convert it for the first time, he has first to download the pre trained model. If you already have um, converted a, a file, then it works much faster here. And as you can see, he created here this mail normal, uh, Italian mail normal um, JSON file. And when I um, open a file here, as you can see here, um, it takes a little bit of time. He created a a correct JSON file here with all the data inside. And if I um, check on the advanced button and convert it again, he overrides it here. And if I open here um, Italian mail again, then you can see here he creates a much bigger file now. So with all the amplitudes inside. So everything works fine. You can't see the labels, but the auto converter works. So this, so this was everything from, for the auto converter. And yeah, we see us in the next video. Okay, let's talk about the installation of LibTalk. So it's pretty simple. When you have purchased the plugin, you will get a email, an email and with the with a link to your LibTalk tag. So for all customers who already purchased uh, a specific version of LibTalk or uh, of every plugin I develop, will get later updates for free, of course. So simply download the zip file, unpack it. So when you unpack the zip file, then you will end up with a few folders each for the for a cos corresponding Cinema 4D version, simply copy that folder which is which corresponds to your Cinema 4D version. Copy it and go into Cinema 4D. Open the preference folder here and paste the complete folder into this plugin folder. Please do not use the um, plugin folder in the in the programs files thing. Use the program um, plugin folder in the app data roaming here in the preference folder. So that's everything you have to do. And then LibTalk, when you restart Cinema VD, will appear here in the tags extension or tags here in the text menu, LibTalk plugin and the LibTalk chore solver tag. Okay, that was everything for the installation of the plugin. We see ours in the next video. Hi guys, it's me back again. Um, and now we are talking about the LibTalk plugin in depth. Let's start Cinema 4D. And as you can see, I already imported a desk character. So we do the tutorial with 
on this character because it uh, can help us to explain all the functionalities but this also applies to custom characters as well. So uh, I will explain later how to export and import uh, from Death Studio and later also how to prepare custom models. As you can see, when we have imported the character, um, there it is shipped with a special Genesis 9 Morph Controller group and our all the objects which are inside this uh, desk character. So it's very, very complex here. And as you can see here, this Gen Genesis Morph controller here has some user data sliders and a Expresso tag. So this Expresso tag basically controls this main morph, morph, post morph tag here. This Genesis 9 shape, this post morph tag is controlled via this Contro uh, con uh, no controller object here by the user data. So you can see there is an input uh, indicated here. And uh, this postmorph tag is then controlling all the other postmorph tags here. As you can see, they have also inputs. And because it would be overwhelming if you has have to uh, uh, if you had to um, make keyframes for all post morphs um, so this would be overwhelming so this is why they <coughs> made this via one controller object and of course to work with our lip talk tag we need to add our lip talk tag to this null object so this is the first step what we do now we add our lip talk tag to this controller object here so basically if I press play, nothing happens. And as you can see now, um, when we look in our LipTalk tag, this add user data is grayed out now because um, LipTalk detects that there is that there are already user data inside. So uh, that you can't accidentally press this button here. When you add a custom character, this is not grayed out then you add it to a normal null object, then you can simply press add user data and it adds the user data here. So I can show you this quickly. I create a null object, put this onto this, and you can see now it's not great. I press here add user data, and now he adds the special user data for our LipTalk tag. So now we can test this a little bit. So as you can see here, I can open here the mouth here with the pose morph sliders here so this works perfectly we do not uh, need all of the seams but it's much simpler to export all of the seams from desk studio because you don't have to think about which the seam is needed for lip talk so we basically just need a few of them the a the e then the f the ov the uv the t and the w pose here what we need here Okay, when we have a look into LipTalk, let's go through the parameters here first. So um, let's start here with this add poses here. So this button is, uh, okay, explain later here. First of all, we have, I have explained something. So LipTalk can't work with this um, kind of user data here. So LipTalk, there, when you export from desk characters, um, some characters older ones um, lack a specific um, um, vseam, this EE vseam, and newer ones have this vis in addition in the name, and older one, and the other ones uh, don't need any adjustments at all. So LipTalk just needs this AA, EE, AA, AH, and so forth, and not without this vis. And that's why uh, we have this rename DES here. So this rename DES is to rename the the user data is here. And it also renames later the postmorph tag. So what we have to do first, we have to here a postmorph tag link, then we add here this special postmorph tag because this postmorph tag is controlled via this um, null object here. So we drag it into this. And if I hit play, also nothing happens here. And 
we also need because we are now in the audio mode we are not working in a text mode here's the text mode when you switch here then we work in the text mode what we at the moment we work in the audio mode so what we also need is a transcript so i prepared here one transcript i load in first the italian mail here so i italian mail where is it um so here italian mail normal and to hear the sound as well, I have to um, add here a soundtrack so I can load the sound as well. So I lo go in and search for the sound. Here is Italian Mail Normal. So it has now the path to the to the sound, but I also need a track. So as it is with um, um, all the doors outside out there they also need uh, you have to add an audio track first and now he adds the Italian main normal so you can hear it but as you can see it lags in playback so in new versions this is maybe better but here it lags so I recommend now to turn off the materials here because the desk character is very very um yeah performance consuming here so um okay this works fine so we have a good frame rate now and yeah but as you can see nothing happens so the lips are not moving um so i also have to when i import here a transcript i also have to press here load transcript so he loads the trans this is not animatable because then he had load a new transcript load a new transcript though this will absolutely slow down the performance so this is why this load transcript is in so if you reload the scene then it's automatically loaded but not during so you need more lip top tags lip talk tags to load more transcript but as well as i said press load and as you can see nothing happens why is this so so um i this is because we've it's the desk character is still not compatible at the moment because we did not rename it so it's it has still this this in addition in the name and also the pulse mores here the the poses are also have this this addition in its name uh, lip talk just needs this a a e e without this this and what we do now so is simply press rename desk so if there is a postmorph tag already dragged into this link then also the postmorph tag will be renamed so now i simply press rename and as you can see when i look here so he renamed the the vsims uh, which he needs and also here in the postmorph tag he also renamed all the vsims he need for lip talk and now when I drag here, as you can see, now the lips are moving. So basically the functionality is lip talk is controlling here. We are at the moment in the real time mode. So you can see it real time is checked on. If I turn it off, nothing happens again because we didn't uh, uh, record it any keyframes. So we are now in the real time mode and he's moving the lips basically he controls the pulse morph tags uh, the pulse morph sliders and the pulse morph sliders are controlling the user data sliders but because uh, desk characters control uh, the user data of the desk character controlling the pulse morph sliders yeah this is a little bit weird here so it controls the pulse morph sliders and then controls the user data sliders and okay and now it works we can see some lip movements as you can see it's lagging a little bit the animation so also here we increase a little bit here the animation length so we go here maybe to 250 and i reduce a little bit the sound of the desktop
Tredeos Kill è un'azienda tedesca okay. che ha sviluppato un pupato un plugin per cinema. As you can see, it's lagging the animation. So we can see a turn off these old frames. Tredeos Kill è un'azienda tedesca. But be aware, so it seems that he speaks fluently, but sometimes it can be that it Uh, that the animation seems a little bit restless and shaggy and something and unnatural um, better is to check the uh, animation with a preview huh? don't rely on this uh, all frames on the on the preview here on this uh, editor preview um, uh, and, and the render preview don't rely on that please render it out with a preview and check the animation here <laughs> But as you can see, it worked pretty well with the default settings here. So let me explain now the parameters here in depth. So as you can see, you now know how to load a plugin with a desk crack. You know how to rename the desk. And here we have the settings advanced and comic. So this comic mode is just for if you are too lazy to create all the pose more. So it just needs the A pose, the the E pose, the O pose, the T pose and the M pose to work with your character. So it was intended to render just with comic character, uh, cartoon characters. So if you are too lazy to um, do that some, so they just, it just uses the, uh, a few poses. It's explained in the manual, um, the manual you can find here on my website as well. So yeah. You can read yourself about that. Okay, you can see. As you can see, he just uses here a few poses here. And if I turn here to advanced, he uses all the phonemes. Let's go to the next part. The sync start is when the animation should start. So this is to you can sync the animation to the audio or vice versa the audio here to the um, um, to the animation. I prefer to sync the audio to the animation. But anyways, if you want to let your character start talking maybe at frame 30, then you simply um, go up here to frame 30. And also the audio, and then the character just starts only starts when um, frame 30 is reached. So this is why this parameter is for this, um, yeah, this um, sync start, and also here for the audio. Now we, as you can see here, the speed parameter is grayed out. This is you need later for the text mode. I explain later. There you have a, um, the release parameter is very, very important because this parameter um, tells um, LibTalk how quickly um, a pose goes back to its default value. So it's, it's similar to a uh, release time in an audio, plug, uh, audio effect like... Um, Uh, a limiter or a compressor. Uh, when we have a look here, the release time, as we can, if, when we look to the sliders, so they smoothly go back to its default position. So, but when I incre increase here this value, so higher values mean fa it faster goes back to its uh, default value. So when I increase this value here, so you can see here, much faster it's it goes back much faster here and if i um, reduce the value maybe to 16 or 10 then it's it's more a like a it's like more like slow motion or something as you can see here so this is the release time it slowly redu uh, reduces the uh, the value to its um, 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 um default value so to its default value so if a phoneme is detected then it uh, yeah it sets the value and then it releases um, 
via this release parameter to its default value. This is important because if you make too slow release times, then um, the poses are mixing together. And then if you maybe need an M pose where a character has to close the mouth, then it can close the mouth because the A is still open and he wants to speak an M, this doesn't work. So the release parameter is very, very important that you find here a, uh, a value that suits your uh, your needs. Okay, let's go further to the limiter here. So the limiter is, uh, so to say, it's the same as it is with audio effects. So it limits the signal to a specific uh, um, threshold. So volumes, amplitudes, which are higher than this value, maybe an A is detected with 0.5 dB or a decibel, then it limits the high, uh, the higher, uh, the, it limits the amplitude to, to this value, uh, to three. And um, phonemes which detected uh, with lower values, maybe 0.15, uh, yeah, stay, uh, have, uh, have the same value here. Um, so this is good because um, uh, LipTalk is audio is volume controlled because if a character is whispering, yeah, the amplitudes are lower, and if a character is shouting, uh, the amplitudes are higher. So he opens his mouth more widely, and but uh, sometimes it causes LipTalk um, to unnatural and, and uh, animations. So. Um, that's why the limiter is for that you get a consistent animation. So the difference between the higher and lower values is not mm, not uh, so big anymore. So it it has an it has an, a consistent uh, animation now. So yeah. Okay, let's go further to the. Um, you can see that I can. Uh, show you this if I make here the limiter 0.5 now the the signals are limited to 0.5 volume here and the higher the value the the more the mouth is open and then you have to also increase here the release time as you can see some some uh, phonemes detected more silence and he is not opening the mouth so much and some ones are detected with a lot of volume so he is open so this is why this limiter is for so we go very good with um yeah with 0.2 or something Let's increase a little bit of strength here. Okay, and let's go to the next parameter threshold. So this is explained later in the text mode. And here we have now the strength parameter. As you can see, I can regulate here it's more strength or less strength. So this controls the overall strength. And the more he's opening the mouth, the, the faster he has to release the sliders. Um, sometimes you have to adjust here or modify here the release time because when I open the mouth very widely so so he need much faster release time to get back to the default value but don't rely to the preview uh, to this editor view so you should now and then render a preview. So we rendered now a preview quickly. And let's check here the project settings, you know, FPS. So as you can see here. 3 Deus Kile un azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per cin. As you can see, it's a little bit too much release time uh, for my taste. So let's go back here maybe. And so for this um yeah, you have to take that into account that this uh, works together. Um, so I shrink it back to values like this. Okay. 
And the next, as you can see, this is self-explaining here, the, uh, the, the strength values here. So here you can um, increase or decrease the strength of each the seam separately, um, independently. So maybe you have here. So I, I don't like this O, the O is too weak. So I increase here this value 0.5. This is a factor. So one is, yeah, one is the standard and this is a factor. It's 0.49 more. Um, as you can see now, the O is stronger. Stradio skill here. 3DO skill, so you can increase also here a little bit, but not too much. 3DO skill è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per... So, but don't overdo this. So, stay in. And also the A should be a little bit more. 3DO skill è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per... So, don't rely on this preview. So, <laughs> yes, um, this is important to know. 3DO Skill è un'azienda tedesca che ha, svizzica, che ha sviluppato un plugin per cinema. So you can see it works much better with all frames now. And the load sound we have also explained here. Here's also a mute button. You can mute it. 3DO Skill è un... As you can see here, che ha you don't have to go here into this... Um, yeah, all, all the time into this track here and show here and look and delete here and... Um, uh, mute the sound and load another sound and start frame. This is all you can all do this inside the clip talk. But be aware, this mute button is not animatable. Yes. So maybe in future updates I make this, but it's not animatable. Then here you have the delete soundtrack, the add soundtrack. I told you, so you can simply delete the soundtrack, add a soundtrack. If you load another soundtrack, maybe this one. So it instantly. Uh, uh, makes a new sound, but basically it just makes it as frame zero here. Okay, let's load our Italian mail again. So, okay. And now we come to another important parameter here, the playback start and end. As you can see here, our animation here is here. So our animation instantly stops here animating. So what is going wrong? So this is the playback start and end of a range here. So here you can tell LipTalk when it should work. So this is important. So now my, my animation goes here to 100 and frame 95, 95 maybe. And now LipTalk is working here as well. This is an important parameter because if you have more LipTalk tags on your character, with each with another transcript and another WAV file, um, they would all, um, yeah, block each other. Uh, maybe you create another null object, you add here another LipTalk tag with another sound, load another transcript. The one is working from frame 30 and the other one is working from frame uh, 31 to the, to the end. And then uh, they don't block each other anymore. So this is very important to know. So, so I quickly explain now this advanced mode parameter. I forgot this to explain. And also these this add poses will be explained later when we work with uh, custom characters. But I can tell you quickly what this does. I create quickly a null object and a pose morph tag here, pose morph. And my lip talk tag, maybe just a lip talk tag, lip talk. And I drag here inside my post morph tag and I have null object. Then I say here add user data. It creates here the user data. And as you can see, I didn't have, I did, I do not have any poses here. So I have to create all the poses manually, create a pose, rename it, create a pose, rename it. And that's why this uh, add poses button is 
Here I simply press add poses and he adds all the poses for me with the right naming. And I, what I have to do simply is now I go into my pose and now I set the strength and now I, I sculpt it or something like that. So this is a little time saver and yeah, for this is the parameter. So now let's explain here this, this advanced parameter here. Um, it is made for characters who tend uh, to draw out the words a little bit like, oh my God. So let me explain it with a example. So I load in now a voice. So this German um, law. Uh, press load. And then you can see the advanced mode appears here because I converted it uh, uh, earlier with uh, the auto converter in the advanced mode. Then LipTalk automatically uh, knows now that uh, sh uh, detects that there are amplitudes inside this file, and then he activates here make make this uh, uh, makes this uh, parameter available. And what I have to do now is quickly I load in my uh, the German long devil. I had it uh, converted a little bit <laughs> like this. And yeah, it sounds like this. And um, let me quickly uncheck this. Oh, I have already um, keyframes there. I delete them. Uh, let me quickly um, delete this. Um, let me quickly delete this motions here. Um, okay. Uh, so as you can see, it's just the voice. Ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. Du, du hast gar nichts dafür getan. So it goes up to 320 and like this. Ich habe das Plugin. So he draws out the vo the walls a little bit. Ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. Entwickelt. And this is um yeah, for this you need uh, the release time doesn't handle this because the release time is a speed value uh, which instantly goes back to its default values and you would always have to had to animate this uh, parameter in uh, all the time over so this is not possible so this is for uh, if you know that your character has long vowels then you have to convert it in the advanced mode but if there's just one little um uh, phoneme which is a little bit longer you can uh, trick a little bit with the release time or maybe the manual recorder you don't have to convert it in the advanced book because it's a much larger file size but anyways I have here uh, the complete um, dialogue is with long vowels and exaggeration and all of things and now I turn on this uh, I go to real time and I don't switch on this advanced mode. So I have now two po uh, all the two possibilities to work with advanced mode or without advanced mode. As you can see here, um, ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. So with release time, this wouldn't uh, is is not possible here to work with here. Ich habe das Plug Plugin entwickelt. So this is basically not work, uh, possible with uh, release time. Ich habe das, das Plugin entwickelt. Entwickelt. So it works a little bit, but as you can see, it's not working perfectly. Ich habe and that's why this um, advanced mode is implemented here. So I turn on now. I switch all to the default settings here I turn on now this advanced mode and now it is controlled via the amplitude so lip talk detects a phoneme reads the strength and now is is um, searching in a specific amount of strength uh, frames uh, range 
uh, after a silence point when a uh, so this is a little bit complicated. This is an algorithm, algorithm I developed. I call it the range method. And this is a little bit uh, difficult to explain now. So this is more technical thing. So as you can see now, he detects, uh, he works now with amplitude. Ich habe das Plugin entw entwickelt. Du hast gar nichts dafür getan. Okay, we have to increase, of course, the strength value now a little bit. Ich habe das Plugin in entwickelt. Let's turn off this all frames thing. Otherwise, it looks a little bit weird. It's too slow. Ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. Du hast gar nichts dafür getan. And this is why this um, threshold parameter is now very important. This threshold parameter. So this parameter is similar to an audio effect called noise gate. So this works similar to a noise gate in, in the audio um, section because... Um, an audio and a noise gate basically um, cuts off a signal when a certain um, value has been exceeded. So in this case, our threshold value determines when a signal is detected as silence, and then he cuts off the the um, yeah the signal. Um, every uh, value which is under this value will be cut off. Um, this value works dynamically, internally works dynamically. So higher values, where if there is an, a phoneme which is detected with a high vol volume, then the threshold is also um, uh, uh, goes more up. And if a signal, maybe if you're whispering, um, then this and uh, the whisper signal would be under below this value, then the signal would be cut off. So this is not good. So that's why this uh, parameter internally works um, dynamically. So if he detects more silent p passages, um, then he also sh shrinks down the value a little bit at uh, the threshold internally and takes this into account. So in my case, I shrink this up to 0.1 maybe. So you can see he closes instantly the mouth because, but this E is much longer. So this means the threshold is too high. So we have to reduce it a little bit, 0.5 or something. Now you can see he holds it longer now, so because it uh, the silence is a little bit um, less. Habe das Plugin entwickelt. Du hast gar nichts dafür getan. Okay, getan uh, is also a little bit weird. Dafür getan. Oh, here it works. Maybe you can increase or uh, decrease a little bit the release time. Du hast gar nichts dafür getan. So, uh, well, otherwise you reduce it a little bit more here. So this is a little bit uh, small values here, I know, but... Ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. Du hast... So here the do is also... Du hast so looks a little bit. Du hast gar nichts dafür getan. Okay. Um, okay, as I said, uh, you you should not rely on this uh, preview here on this edit a few. So simply render it out to a preview and check this out if this works better. And let's have a look how this works. Ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. Du hast gar nichts dafür getan. So it looks it looks pretty good. And this is why for this is uh, the uh, uh, for what this uh, yeah advanced mode is for. And what I also have to mention here is the um, internally 
the LibTalk plugin work has an internally attack time because if an phoneme is detected it, he would instantly immediately uh, uh, goes to uh, to its uh, value so this would cause the animation totally um, uh, restless and and shaggy and so forth so this is why internally there is an is an attack time uh, uh, <laughs> As you can see when it's swing uh, when it goes to its amplitude it swings slowly to the value so not abrupt uh, so this is uh, an internally attack time which is coded and the higher the frame rate the higher the more the longer is the attack time so liptalk works basically good with frame rates between 10 and 100 frames per second. So let's check this if this works. Uh, so let me explain this. Let's switch here on the frame rate. Um, let's go to the project and type in 25 frames, for instance. He internally calculates the new frames and so forth in the loop talk uh, <laughs> order file. You see, it's still working and if I crank up the frame it to 60 maybe ich habe das plugin entwickelt du hast gar nichts dafür. so basically you just need to maybe increase a little bit the the release time it's also took into account internally in the code that the release time also is a little bit adjusting with that but uh, sometimes you need a little bit of adjustments here ich habe das plugin entwickelt du hast gar nichts dafür getan so don't rely to this uh, preview here so yeah ich, ich. Okay, this is also good to know that the frame rate is taken into account here with the lip talk tag and also frame rates with less than uh, maybe 10 frames is okay, but you should not go lower than 10 frames. Ich habe das Plugin entwickelt. Du hast because if you go lower than 10 frames then maybe a phoneme is detected at time 0.5 but at mm. time 0.5 is no frame so he needs to round the frame to 0.10 but then there is still a, a there is already another phoneme detected so he overrides the phoneme and uh, overgo uh, goes uh, and so he, so to say, um, um, ignores the other phoneme and left this out. So that's why lower frames don't work here. Maybe if you type in 50, 15, uh, this works basically. Ich habe das Plugin. As you can see, um, the frame is also working here basically very good here with the LibTalk plugin. Yes. Let's go over to um, here the manual recording. As you can see here, the manual recording is for animating. Why doesn't this work? Okay, the manual recorder is for. Um, yeah, manual recording. As you can see here, at, an, at the moment, um, the transcript is controlling, but as soon as I once I as soon as I check this, so now it completely takes the values from here. So now you can animate here um, by hand. So maybe if you have um, noise sound in the in the in the in the audio file, or maybe if there is a laughter which uh, the audio converter doesn't uh, recognize. Is not able to recognize this laughing or something then you can animate this or you simply interrupt here um, and animate some some uh, yeah sounds manually so this is very important so as you can see here he talks maybe and now i 
say here uh, off and now I say here on and now I can make this maybe like this I say record sliders and he records all the sliders and then I <laughs> oh I forgot to check you on so now it opens the mouth and now I reduce the value a little bit back again to zero record sliders and as you can see when I uh, animate here this you can also use this reset sliders here so it resets all the values and then you record it and then in the next frame I turn on the um, I turn on the uh, a turn off the manual recording there he takes over the next one is good skill on azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato so this is pretty if you have a noise you can also detect a uh, silence or something yeah it's it's a manual recorder here you find uh, its use usage later okay um i delete here quickly the keyframes here um and if you're satisfied now with the result, what you can do now is, of course, hear the baker. So you can bake here now the animation maybe to 100. Now I say here, and now you simply say here bake. So he indicates here with this spinning thing here. Now he has finished. As you can see here, he baked with keyframes and he baked the keyframes into the user data. And at the moment, nothing special happens because it's already in the real time mode. So it's already controlled uh, via this transcript. But as soon as I switch here to uh, I switch off the real time mode, now the user data are controlling the um, the post more so the um, lip talk reads the user data and then gives it over to the uh, post morph. So you can see that because the strength value of it make it zero is no has no longer any impact here. As you can see, it's now controlled via this um, user data sliders. <laughs> Um, and this enables us to now, uh, this enables us to re render it, um, let's bring this value back here. This enables us to render it, uh, create now motions out of that. But I explain this later uh, with the text mode. Okay. <laughs> So I can simply delete. This is an, an, uh, uh, a, a thing which you can undo and also delete here. Simply press delete and he deletes all the keyframes here in the... Not the, the keyframes here, but the, uh, the keyframes in the... Uh, in the baker here. Okay, we have to turn on uh, real time again. And now let's have a look to um, the um, text mode. Okay, let's switch here our lip talk to the text mode. I simply make your text mode, click your text mode. And let's put this a little bit ab more above that we can see all the things here. As you can see, it's, uh, yeah, it takes much more place now. And as you can see, when I just click text mode, a few parameters disappear and uh, new ones appear. And the limiter and the threshold value is now grayed out. And so that you later can jump back to the audio mode as well. This parameter is also animatable. Um, okay, let's see uh, what's different here. So the speed parameter is now available and here is now a language menu so lip talk in the audio uh, in the text mode con uh, 
it provides um, three languages at the moment. It's a very uh, a lot of work to convert all the dictionaries in the different languages. So I looking for I'm looking forward to um, provide you with more language dictionaries. So here's the, uh, it supports at the moment English. Russian and German, English with about 160,000 words, Russian uh, with about uh, 100,000 words and German also with 160,000 words. Um, yeah, this should be uh, enough for the moment. And what we have to do if we want to work here with text is pretty simple. So at the moment, as you can see, Three deals. nothing happens. So I delete the soundtrack so that it's that we don't hear anything, or I simply mute it. And as you can see, nothing happens here because we didn't enter any uh, didn't enter any text. So I text I use here now the English language for the tutorial. So I type in now uh, maybe hello to the lip talk plug in and now I simply press hello to the lip talk plugin and I press convert and he asked me that the phonemes in the panel will be overwritten I did this implemented this because that you don't accidentally overwrite the uh, uh, very the uh, complicated phonemes that later you can uh, add the uh, modify the phonemes later so and then he uh, makes here a space on, uh, on at the beginning and says hello to the LibTalk plugin. But as you can see here, something weird going on because uh, when a English word is the same in the phonemes panel here, then something then he didn't uh, uh, recognize it correctly in the uh, in the dictionary here. The dictionary for English is a little bit different. The other dictionary I compiled uh, by uh, compiled by myself. Uh, the English I downloaded somewhere I, I made online, so this is a little bit different. So as you can see, a lip talk. Welcome to lip talk plug to the lip talk plugin. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Let's me let try me. Hello. Welcome to the lip talk plugin. Lip talk plugin. Now I convert it. He asked me, okay. Hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. When, as you can see here, it the LibTalk is not in the dictionary because you see that because the word in the text panel is the same in the phonemes panel. There's a special syntax what you can use here in the text mode now because the word LibTalk is made out of two words, lip and talk. And what you can do here, you can go between this lip and make it an underscore here and then convert it again and as you can see now he recognizes lip talk correctly and the same as goes with plug in you can convert it in this and also plug in and um, now this works here and let's say uh, let's look at the animation hello welcome to the lip talk plug in but as you can see, it's very hardly to uh, voice over this because there is pretty no pause in between the uh, the, the word uh, the words because we tend to talk words, uh, speak words, um, yeah, fluently. Uh, we combine words fluently, and there is just a pause of fifty millisecond between the words. So you can increase this value here a little bit maybe to 130 now he makes a much uh, he makes a pause between the words hello welcome to the lip talk plug in so and also you have a speed parameter here you can increase the speed a little bit hello welcome to the lip talk plug in so the speed parameter is so to say a factor so the higher the value the longer the animation takes and the lower the value the faster the animation is so yeah as you can see he talks now much faster um, 
Hello, welcome to the Lip Talk plugin. And if I reduce it, don't overdo this. Hello, welcome to the Lip Talk plugin. As you can see, it's much faster, and here it's much, much slower. Hello, welcome to the Lip Talk plugin. Okay, this is the speed parameter. I let it here, leave it here and to its default value here. Hello, welcome to the lip. And as you can see, if I make here 500 milliseconds, hello, welcome to the lip talk plugin. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I can show you this later, but this is pretty cool, this pause thing here. I recently imp uh, implemented this, so because I was not satisfied with this. And as you can see now, you have all the phonemes, everything works well, but now you say, okay, he speaks, hello, welcome to the LipTalk plugin. I want that the character now makes a pause after the word hello. How can I do this? So, hello, welcome, because I want a pause about a half a second or so. So this is... You can add to this, into the phonemes panel, you can add a special syntax. And this syntax, I explain via this edit external here better. So this edit external is, it opens the external editor, which is the standard in your system. So I click here and it instantly takes the words, which are here, the phonemes into this, um, my text editor and then I can edit much better and, and uh, comfortably comf comfortable and so I you can add now parameters so let me explain first the syntax of the parameters here so the syntax is pretty easy there is a if you want a phoneme to be um, uh, uh, to hold longer, maybe hello, then you can add the parameter um, time, T for time, followed by a colon and then a, um, a float number, maybe um, 0.5. This means 0.5 seconds. And you can also write 0.5 seconds or 0.55. I think you cannot write 0.555, just two numbers here, 0.55 or 0.1 or 0.55, something like that. This is the time value. If you want the strength of the phoneme more stronger, is also a, uh, a factor, you can type here S for strength. So all parameters have to be enclosed into a parenthesis, then time, maybe 0.5. Then you want the phoneme a little bit str uh, more, get st more strength and type uh, divided by a comma, no space. And then you type strength, S for strength, colon, and then also um, 1.2 or 3. Then a comma, if you want a pause after the word or after the, the phoneme, then type P for pause and also here a uh, float number in millisecond 0.3 or 0.5 then enclose it uh, close it with a parenthesis and this is the parameter syntax which you can add after in after every phoneme if you just want one a value maybe just the strength uh, or the time just close it here with a parenthesis like this maybe if a phoneme so let's show in the parameters how this works. So my hello, I want a, a little pause after the parameter here, after the hello, after the phoneme, the hello, yeah? Then I open the parentheses and then uh, type in time, colon, and then 0.5, uh, 4. Then I close it with the parentheses. Hello, welcome, hello, welcome to, hello, welcome to the LipTalk plugin. And also here, I want also pause. I parenthesis time and 0.3 and hello 
Welcome to the Lip Talk plug, Lip Talk plug, Lip Talk plugin. Lip Talk and Lip Talk. I want to exaggerate a little bit. I want to that he emphasizes it a little bit more. And here I type in uh, strength and type in 1.4. Lip Talk plugin, Lip Talk plugin. And then I control and save this. And I don't want to save that. And then I have here the paste parameters. I paste it and he instantly pastes that from this file. He saved this file into in the LibTalk plugin folder. Um, there's simply a, a simple text file. And he always reads, when you paste, he always reads the last uh, thing in, the, in this uh, file. So please be aware that when you when you change something and forgot to save that he uh, inserts here the the last saved state here so i have here now the parameters and look what uh, what's happening now hello welcome to the lip talk plugin so now i i said he hello he should hold the word hello okay this was a little bit uh, weird now Hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. Ah, I 2D. I, I I did a mistake here. So uh, 2D. I wanted a pose here after that. So let let's edit here. 2D. I want here a pose, not a time value. So. Um, Hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. Plugin, LibTalk plugin. So you can, yeah, plugin, plugin. Let's try if the plugin is much faster. I didn't, I don't, I reduce here a little bit the space between the words. Hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. So a little bit more speed, maybe just a little bit more. Hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. So it's very easy now to, yeah, make a voiceover for this if you have the text and so forth. So this is very powerful. This uh, this text area here, this phoneme editor. So yes. So now you have also control, of course, here to the strength parameter if you want more strength or something like that. Hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. So the release parameter is has not as much um, impact to the animation as it is with the audio, but it is still um, yeah working here. So what I have for what I had forgotten to mention here is this parameter error thing here. So this shows you when you added a parameter error. So maybe I add now a parameter after the hello. I want to make a pause. And instead of P, I type in here uh, K colon point four. I save this and paste it. And as you can see, he shows an error. Bad parameter syntax check. And he shows this error as as long as I uh, as this uh, error occurs. So if I type in now P for pause, save this and paste that, as you can see the the error disappears. So let's delete here quickly the the parameters here. Or let's simply com uh, convert it here so he overwrites here. So as you can see here, hello, welcome to the LibTalk plugin. Okay. And also the manual record is also working. If I turn this on, as you can see, it's also working here. So you can interrupt this if you maybe yeah, need a special laughter or something. You can animate here, it's maybe <laughs> or something. You can, um, uh, yeah, animate it with the manual recorder. And that it's working with uh, another language as well, maybe German. I show you it now. Um, 
I say hallo. My name is Thomas. So I convert it. Hello, my Hello, my name is my Hello, my name is Thomas. So he says it. Hello, my name is Thomas. So now I and also Russian is also working. So I copy here, uh, copied here a Russian thing. So let's paste it in here. It means uh, let's listen to it. Uh, Hello, my name. Uh, here, here. Привет, меня зовут Томас. Привет, меня. So this is Russian, and please do not use any uh, extra here uh, special characters like commas, colon, or something. LipTalk automatically de uh, deletes that. Okay, this is Russian. We turn this. Uh, we switch here to Russian, and I convert it, and. Hopefully it works. So okay, you see, previous it should. It seems that it worked, and now he talks Russian. Okay, um, let's switch back to English. Um, hello, welcome to to the lip talk. Lip talk plug in. So yeah. So, and you can do this with all the words. Maybe you want, uh, because if you, you can also write this with two words. So, but then he makes a pause between the two words. So, but if you want to combine the words fluently, you have to use this underscore if it doesn't have the word. And this you can do with all the words. You can also say super duper uh, superhero plugin. So, if you type it superhero uh, hero plugin. The word is not in the dictionary, of course. Superhero plugin. You can see here he just writes superhero plugin. This is also working because the phoneme panel also understands uh, basic um, letters which are in the alphabet A, B, C, D. You can also uh, manipulate the phoneme. Maybe if the word hello is, uh, let me explain this quickly with the superhero plugin. As you can see, superhero plugin is not in the in the dictionary. What you can do is super. And then hero and plugin. All the three words should be in the in the in the dictionary. And then you, if you convert and no, it is not. Why doesn't this work? Uh, moment, moment. Okay, I pronounced it wrong. Superhero is superhero. So maybe like that. Superhero. And then I convert it. And now you can see superhero, he combines the word, now he finds the word. And you can do this with every superhero, superhero plugin, plug in, and superhero plugin, now it works. But you also can write here um, just simply letters like hello, this is also working here, hello. So um, if this is empty, it's also working here, as you can see here. So maybe if you type in hello, um, you can see that it's maybe it's not natural because he he animates helio, as you can see, helio. So you can delete this, basically this O, and this should work. Hello, it's also working. So you can manipulate also here the phonemes a little bit, if you or you can write it simply. Um, just here, Thomas, it's also working. As you can see, Thomas, yeah, it's also working. So this is everything you have to know about the phonemes thing. And now I show you quickly a pretty cool thing. So with baking and the motions. So let's type in hello, hello, welcome to the lip talk plugin, yeah. Convert this. Hello, welcome to the LipTalk plugin. But as you can see, he combines the words fluently, so it's hardly to animate. So what you can do now is I show you the the. What you can also do is now we can, uh, we have here the thing. Hello, welcome to the LipTalk plugin, 
And what I do now is it goes to frame 105. And now I simply bake this. It takes a while and it is now baked. Now I can switch to real time mode. And what I can do now is I can simply choose my um, character here. I switch to the uh, animation panel here quickly. Um, animate. So you can see here I have everything. I switch to the poles here. And now I say here now animate and add motion clip. I simply um, let just parameters and remove from included, create motion, bake expressions, parameters, and now I'll bake it. Now he has baked here the motion. He deleted the uh, the keyframes from, from the user data, but now LibTalk is reading from the motions. As you can see, it now reads from the motions. And this is pretty powerful because then you can save this everything into the um, into a library. You can save this into a content browser or on your uh, hard drive and reuse it later on every character which is prepared for LibTalk. So simply by naming it, this is the hello and this is everything. In later updates, I want to implement also here a strength value for the um, motion system and for the uh, keyframe mode when you're not in real time. Also here, um, uh, strength values like this, because now the strength values have no impact uh, because it's recorded. But later I want to implement here in future updates also strength values here to um, manipulate also already recorded um, um, lip, uh, uh, motion files because then if maybe a character needs a little bit more exaggeration he says hello but the other one says hello so he needs a little bit more um, um, yeah strength here so this is then I implement here the strength parameter as well so but this is not all what you can do now you can use it now non-linear you can record more motions you can load now another a transcript, uh, build a motion, then you can use it here non-linearly. And now I show you another thing here. Uh, let's switch back here to, um, quickly switch back here to LibTalk and turn on here the real-time parameter. Now it's, uh, it's again uh, controlled with the thing. And now I crank up here this uh, this um, sorry this uh, word spacing parameter here so that I have a lot of pause between the single words so here hello welcome to the lip talk plugin hello welcome to the lip talk plugin and this is pretty cool because let's make 500 and how long does this go here so about 169 and now i bake this it takes a while and now i also create here now a motion um add motion clip and just the parameter here not the rotation now I switch back here to animate and as you can see here now it's uh, we have to switch here a uh, turn off the real time and now it's controlled uh, sorry hello but what you can do now is pretty awesome you can now go here say hello then you switch here to motion system our connect and cut hello Welcome, cut to, cut the, cut lip talk, cut plugin. And now, and now you can simply arrange the words independ oh, sorry, independently. So to your suits here. So hello. And this is pretty awesome. You can select all and drag them. And you can also now stretch them out. Hello. 
you can say you can say okay hello hell hello you can make them slowly my maybe or if you say here hello or you cut it here again hello here and then you uh, you cut it here and then you stretch this one maybe hello also so hello welcome to the lip talk so this is pretty cool so now you can arrange the words um, pretty easily so when you animate you can uh, this is really powerful now and this is why I added also this uh, word spacing parameter here so in, in future updates as I said I want to um, implement here the strength for already uh, baked um, keyframes and motions and also I want here to um, implement a function which automatically cuts the motions the last motions you created to uh, like this to the words exactly so that you don't have to do this manually so this will maybe come in a future update so this was everything uh, uh, for the lip talk plugin itself so this is uh, applies also to custom characters the only difference is that the custom characters don't have such a pose morph thing and all this stuff. So you just have a null object for that custom character, which uh, simply serves as a, uh, you just have to create. I show you this later. So now I, we talk about, uh, take a small pause, a break. And now that later we talk about the lip talk solver, uh, lip talk chore solver tag. This is this one. Um, I explain this quickly in the next video. Okay, guys, let's talk about the chore solver tag for the LipTalk plugin. So we can find uh, the chore solver tag here in tags, um, LipTalk tags, and LipTalk chore solver. So here I have a custom character with a chore joint. So this chore joint is um, rigged to the mouth here. As you can see, it opens the mouth. And if you are a lazy animator, you just want that the mouth is a little bit moving or something. So for this is the chore joint solver tag to control, so to say, the um, joint with text import or with the audio functionality from the lip talk tag. So here I added a lip talk tag to um, a null object. The null object has, as we know, this um, user data sliders and I imported a, a transcript in this case and the wave file, it sounds like this. And at the moment, nothing special is happening. So I, what I have to do now to control the jaw joint is to add the jaw joint solver tag to this joint here. So what I do is simply at the moment the lip talk tag um, just has this motions here uh, controls this motion post morph tag. This post morph tag is just controlling a little bit the, the lips here. I explain that later in preparing custom characters. But at the moment we just important that we um, just use here the pose morph tag so this can also be empty poses without anything just empty poses so with um, adding poses here with this parameter here and now we add here a short joint solver tag here to this short joint so i go here into this um, lip talk tags and short joint solver tag and as you can see nothing happens um, so it needs the post morph tag which the lip talk tag is controlling so what we do now is we drag this post morph tag which the lip talk tags controls here because it controls the sliders here as you can see it controls the sliders of the post morph tag 
and the chord joint solver reads this movement here. And as you can see, nothing special is happening here. It's just uh, moving a little bit lips. Uh, I made poses for that. And now what we have to do here, here you have the axis, the rotation axis, the strength parameters, all self-explaining. But what important step now is this angle function. Because when you maybe um, freeze the orientation of the joint or if the joint has the, the standard uh, position here or here, this has to be taken into account. So um, this is... First, we have to initialize the angle here from which the starting point is. So I simply press here, initialize angle. And now um, the chore joint is initialized and now it works with the data from the LipTalk plugin, as you can see. So it's now moving the joint uh, accordingly to the uh, data from the LipTalk tag, but it's inverted, so we have to press the invert and now he's opening the mouth. So now it's opening the mouth here. We can change here the angle. So it's going sideways or it's going up ways if the, axis, if the axis is rotated. But most of the time this is the right axis here. So this is pretty quick. We can pretty uh, we can quickly uh, animate our joint, so to say. And in the next tutorial, I explain uh, because now we can also use our jaw joint to make here the all the poses because we don't have to um, sculpt all the the mouth and the jaw joint and the uh, and the jaw because the, the jaw uh, is controlled via this joint now and we just have to do a little bit of um, stretching in the e or the lips a little we have just to um, um, sculpt a little bit of lips later so this is also we can use this jaw joint solver so as you can see I made a little bit of lip movement here. Le. 3D Oskile è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per Cinema 4D per la sincronizzazione labiale. So this works pretty well here in combination with the chord joint. So when you just use the lip talk tag, you have to sculpt all the poses. And if you have a chord joint, then you can say here maybe um, a post deformance or something. And this is pretty well. So I choose here post deformers. So now the um, yeah the, the the poses will be recognized after the chore joint. So this is much faster. So I, I explained it in preparing custom characters later. So now as you can see, initialize. And if you free the uh, the angle, so it's nothing. It's not working anymore. If you initialize the angle, so it's, it's working. Not. Yeah, we first have to press here animate and now it's working. So, okay, this is the functionality of the chore joint solver. This is pretty cool. You can use it also for another things, maybe to control a, um, yeah, a, 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 a cube or any other project uh, uh, object as well. So, here we can access, here's the overall strength, so we can. No strength or more strength. And this is also strength for each phoneme, as you know it from the lip talk tag. And here's the invert button. So, yeah, this is the functionality of the jaw joint solver tag. Pretty cool in combination with lip talk plugin and uh, yeah, for quick animations or in combination with the pose morph. Uh, it's much faster to create morphs for the lip uh, with the jaw joint. You can see he also moving the lips a little bit. So, yes. Okay, we see us in the next tutorial how to um, export from desk characters and then I explain how to prepare custom um, characters for lip talk. Okay, let's quickly talk about the Desk Studio installation and exporting Desk characters into Cinema 4D. So first of all, if you didn't already install 
um, Des Studio, you simply have to go to Des, um, to the website of Des. Um, you can find it here under Des 3D. And then you go to your website and you can start here for free. So simply create an account um, for Des Studio and then you should can download Des Studio. So, but before you download Des Studio, you will prompt it to download the Des Install Manager. Install the Install Manager and then you can download Des Studio. So when you have downloaded Des Studio, you have to log in here at this Install Manager. Install then first Des Studio and all the required packages. Um, and then if you have Des Studio installed, then you have to install the Cinema 4D bridge. So you can find it in ready to install. Here you can find a Des to Cinema 4D bridge. So simply check this. Now I click on start queue. So now he is installing Des to Cinema 4D bridge and I can see it here. Anyway, here Des to Cinema 4D. It's installed. So I can close the install manager and can fire up Des Studio. So Des Studio has loaded and I prepared a small scene here. I quickly load it into. Okay, now it has finished. And to export a character from Des Studio, we simply have to select the whole character. So you can see it um, via this bounding box here. So now we go to File and here we have a uh, a menu called send to and here is our plugin desk to cinema vd i simply click that then here this desk to cinema vd bridge opens and it shows me the asset name which is selected the woman and now i choose here skeletal skeletal mesh um, not static or animation choose skeletal mesh because we want to export the joints and bones as well and very important now for our LibTalk plugin are the Vseems. So the, the Vseems you can find here in the export morphs. So simply choose, go to choose morphs and the Vseems, so maybe these are uh, removed. So the Vseems you can find it here under here. It, it depends on which uh, character you export. If it is a Genesis 9 or Genesis um, 8 or something. Okay, it's here under head, head, and here you see the Vseems, all the Vseems. So LipTalk basically just needs a few of them, not all. But yeah, we choose all the Vseems, then you say add to export. And then you can also maybe export a blink of an eye or so an eye blink as well. And add it here to the export. But I have to mention here, older desk characters miss this vis in front of the word. So they don't have this vis, they just have the phonemes naming here. So this is also works. And very old characters miss this EE version here. So they just have the EH version here. So this is also working. Um, LipTalk um, detects that and then you can later rename this characters in LipTalk. But I'll show you that later. So export Put this to the export panel, add this to the export panel and simply say accept, accept. And we can leave the settings as they are. But first of all, we have to uh, switch on the advanced settings. And here you can see the Cinema 4D plugin installer. What we have to do is simply we say here install plugin. And then he's, he asks us where we want to install the plugin. So simply choose your plugin folder and say here, install the plugin. And that's everything you have to do. And there is also here the open in the media folder. This is just the folder where LibTalk caches these files. And now we are ready to um, accept this um, exportation. So simply click accept. So it will take a few seconds. So now we have Death Studio is, has complete. You can let you can leave this uh, Death Studio open, but you can also close it. it doesn't matter. 
And now we go to Start Cinema 4D, and now here our DES 3D plugin shows. And since we have already exported from DES Studio into this cached folder here, into this intermediate folder, we can directly click here DES to Cinema 4D. As you can see here, little interface pops up and we simply have to click here Genesis character. Then I say here, would you fix bone to orientation? I say no. Then he asked me if I want to um, save it with textures. You can uh, save the complete f uh, f project with the assets. I say I make this later. And everything is done now. This is the basic state um, of our character when we have exported, imported from Death Studio. So it will create the Death character geometry with the files in it. And it also generates here a Genesis 9 morph controller. This is very important. This is essential for Death characters to work with. So this pulse morph has some user data, this controller, which um, controls, so let me switch off quickly here the um, the joints here. So this null object controls all the phonemes here from the user data, as you can see here. So now that was everything for the for exporting and importing desk characters into Cinema 4D. Okay, let's talk about how to prepare a custom character. Here you can see I have a character, so when we look at that, it's a pretty nice mesh here. And now I want to uh, create poses out of that. So for the post morph tag, we need uh, for our lip talk tag, we need special phonemes. And the first step, what I do, I simply create here a null object. Um, let's switch here to the other layout here. So I simply create here a null object, and this is my lip talk holder, so to say. And I add here my lip talk tag to this um, thing here. And the first thing what I need is, of course, here I need a pose morph tag. So I add a pose morph tag to my character, go to rigging and pose morph tag. And as you can see, uh, I want to make here, of course, poses for the points. And he creates a standard pose here, I delete that. and. Now I had to add all the poses manually for the lip talk tag, but therefore I simply take here a, uh, I drag the pose morph tag into the lip talk tag here. And now what I can do, I simply say here, add poses. So he adds automatically all poses for me, for the v uh, themes I need here. And also I add here now a also user data to my null object. Now he adds all the user's data as well. So these are the first steps I have to do now. So the next thing is we have now three possibilities to create here um, poses for a custom character. We can create poses completely with geometry. So we sculpt the jaw and for the A, we sculpt the jaw and the lips for the E. For the E, the E, the O, the U, the F, the W, sh, T, M, and B, and so forth. And let us let me explain quickly the shapes of the pose morph, f uh, how, how this looks like. So when you open the manual of the LibTalk um, plugin, so uh, I maybe later uh, I add here also a button in the plugin, or uh, when you go to my website, you can find the... Um, link to the manual or uh, it is also shipped with a plugin in the refs folder and then you can go to custom characters um, here the, the topic custom characters and there it is explained what we all need for a, uh, 
for the character and we have more possibilities so we can set up without a chore joint and with a chore joint. So first of all, I explain the method without a chore joint. So we need um, all the poses here for the fist seams. And here's, a, here's a, some pictures how this looks like. Though so the AA pose, so this is for words like sun, summer or but. Then the EE pose is for words like send, message, leg or something and we have the ey pose this is for is simple international the ov is for go motion bro the uv is for dude look puke or something the f pose follow versatile fantastic and the w pose is for when why wonder sounds and so forth and we need also the sh pose it's for should show shelter and the T pose is for all consonants where, where the mouth is slightly open, like T, K, N, S, L, R. So we. And also here, the M pose is for all sounds where, where the mouth has to be closed for M, P, or B, or something like mother, must, many, proud, plastic, brother, bull. So he pressed the lip a little bit um, yeah, together. And you can read yourself here how this works in more detail. So let's go back here to SimOVD. And now you, what you have to do, you have to sculpt, of course. Here you go into your pose and into edit mode. And maybe you can sculpt here um, the poses, what you need for A, O, and so forth. Um, a good thing is that when you um, rig a chaw joint to your chaw, and take that uh, to model here uh, the poses so you can open the mouth a little bit and then you say here um, current state to object and this is what I did I take uh, took a, a jaw joint opened the mouth and then simply sculpted a little bit the lips then I said current state to object so what you can do now to create all the poses so I, I rigged here a chore joint to my chore so that I can open the mouth um, simply. So this is just for the modeling things. Later in lip talk, uh, the full cor uh, the character will fully um, 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 modified uh, via this uh, mesh deformations with a pose morph tag. So without any joint. So I simply copy this now and make this invisible. And now I open the chore joint for the O, it's pretty wide open and then I also drag it a little bit in front so like this and then I switch over to my sculpting tools and then I begin, uh, begin to simply quickly sculpt here um, the O a little bit inside like this and you can see here service distance here And yeah, sculpt here my O pose a little bit and I'm satisfied with that. And as I said here, current state to object. And then I drag simply just the geometry out and delete the whole object now. And now I have here, I rename this and say here, this is my away pose for instance. And later when I Use it then with uh, in combination with lip talk without a short joints, for instance. Then I simply create here uh, because my post morph tag, of course, and then uh, maybe lip talk and into the lip talk. I say post morph, I create poses, and then I go into my points mode and say here for the O pose later maybe I take this target here and this is what I um, 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 ended up with but there's another possibility to have as you can see here I uh, have here the my character with a chore joint so um, 
as you can see, the jaw joint is controlling my mouth. So now I add here a pulse morph tag to my character. Sorry, to my character. Um, let me quickly reset bind pose. And I add now here a pulse morph tag to my character. Um, where is it? Rigging pulse morph tag. And since I now use here um, just uh, the jaw joint um, uh, to open the mouth, I just have to sculpt the lips. So I pose morph tag and now I drag this as well into my, uh, here into this pose morph tag, then I say here, now I add here uh, poses, all my poses, as you can see, I go into the edit mode and yeah, simply sculpt here, I go to my, in the sculpt mode. Uh, so then I have here a jaw joint, so I go into the pose A and for this pose A, I have to do nothing because later the jaw joint is opening the mouth uh, with the lip talk jaw joint solver. But now I go, go over to the um, pose E and for the pose E I have to simply, yeah, um, stretch a little bit the lips so the mouth is opened by the jaw joint a little bit with the E pose, E, and then I take my sculpting tools and say here this grab thing and now I simply, um, grab a little bit, so in the new versions you have the symmetry, symmetry tries a uh, functionality is much easier, so a little bit more size. So we have to first uh, make this 100% and now I sculpt here a little bit the lips for the E and if I go to the animation mode as you can see here, later the jaw joint is opening the mouth and the pose uh, is animated in the E a little bit, like E. Now we have this E pose. Then I go over to my, uh, to the next pose here to the E way. I have to, here the E Y pose is pretty the same. So I, uh, need this grab tool. So I make it a little bit smaller. So I, this that's a little bit uncomfortable sometimes too so I opening a little bit like this for the E and then I also stretch here e, e, like this have to first open the mouth with not with post deformers and then you have to sculpt a little bit one one time and then you have to activate post deformers so this okay this is my m pose and now we are done here so we reset the sliders and now i add here a jaw joint solver tag because i just 
uh, move the lips, not the whole geometry. And and here a jaw joint, silver tag, lip talk, jaw joint, silver tag. So now I say here reset bind pose. And now I say here initialize angle. And now I add here my pose morph. And this should work now. And um, let's switch back to this template. So now. so now we have to load in here, of course, a script, the Italian mail, for instance. And load the transcript and load also the sound, Italian mail, normal. And add the soundtrack. So first of all, we have to invert this. Looks pretty well uh, for this. <laughs> 3D Oskile è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per Cinema 4D per la sincronizzazione labiale. So here 3D Oskile è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per Cinedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per Cinema 4D per la sincronizzazione labiale. So you can Deus see it works pretty quick here. So what I have to say, this chore joint is very responsive, so it's better than the lip talk tag itself with the chore joint, so this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so what we can do here is we can simply reduce a little bit the strength here a little bit like that 3D Oskill è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per Cinema 4D per la sincronizzazione labiale 3D Oskill è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per Cinema 4D per la sincronizzazione labiale. So this is the method when you use it with, in combination with a jaw joint solver. So you just have to sculpt a little bit the lips. And if you won't use a jaw joint, then you have to use the method. So also use the jaw joint and then... Uh, you have to sculpt the whole geometry. So this is the difference. So when you're uh, working just with poses without, uh, and then you have to also sculpt the jaw and the lips and so forth. So if you're familiar with Cinema of D and sculpting and character creation, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't have to explain you this uh, in depth because you are an expert and specialized with an expert with specialized knowledge in character animation and maybe you find your way here uh, and your change with lip talk so i think it looks pretty well for this uh yeah quick uh, uh thing here 3D Oskill è un'azienda tedesca che ha sviluppato un plugin per cinema 4D per la sincronizzazione labiale so okay this was it from me this was everything the in-depth tutorial for lip talk and the audio converter exporting importing desk characters and custom characters i yes i know it was a long long tutorial but you can jump from chapter to chapter and yes no problem um for a serious 3d designer okay I hope you have fun and I wish you a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and yeah, see you soon.